here we have a unusual piece of gear a Schlumberger BB 6601 voltmeter and uh, what's unusual about this thing well let's plug it in and turn it on Nixies are they gorgeous four digits or maybe only three and a half I'm not sure uh, apparently it doesn't have the AC board so it's only good for DC even though the AC symbol works and another unusual thing about this regarde ici Fabrique en France something you don't see very often so let's lift the lid and see what's inside which is a bit tricky to undo so moving these four screws makes this come loose but it took a while for me to figure out that you have to lift that over these little clips then this can slide out then you take out those four screws and that comes off so doing well yes doing likewise on the other side Some of these bolts look like they've been replaced with non-original. I think I might replace them all with Phillips head jobs. I'll reinstall these screws at the back because they obviously weren't needed to get this thing open. Okay, so there she is. Glasses slipped. So, got one main board at the bottom, plus one, two, three, four, five, six other circuit boards. Bloody hell, for a voltmeter. <laughs> when was this thing made? Looking at some chips. 1971, 1970. You can see the five Nixies. Obviously Nixie driver, power supply, this AC board that's missing, I'm not sure where that would go. It looks like it's got its full complement of boards, there's nothing, there's no sockets to plug any other board in, so maybe the AC board is in there. Fortunately, we have substantial documentation, including some huge fold out Bloody hell. Wallpaper. Huh. That's uh, 10, 10 A4 pages folded out. <laughs> mm. Not a fair go photograph those and that's just one board there's probably looks like six seven maybe even eight or nine of these fold out things yeah so plenty of documentation there yeah, it's all in on Francais, of course, which is not a lot of use. Dual slope ADC, but look. Um, circuit diagrams are generally cross language boundaries. But she works anyway. I'm, I've got to investigate this AC board. I'll see if there's, if there's anything that describes what all these boards are in this manual. No, it does seem as if the AC board is missing number nine, amplificateur alternative. I presume that's alternating current amplifier. Um, it's a daughter board that lives on there and you can see screw holes for it there. So 
this here, there's a relay and resistor. And above that, there's another board shown with a couple of big items, uh, which would sit up here. And it's not there. So yes, it doesn't have the AC board. Okay, we can go a bit deeper by removing this bar that holds the boards in place and pull them out and have a look. I don't know what the boards are off the top of my head unless it says on them. No, it doesn't. That's something to do with the uh, external interface, so not needed for the front panel operation of this thing. Put him back. I won't take that guy out. Just a driver for the Nixies and okay so we can't see underneath it. I'll move these out of the way so Caps in the power supply. They look alright. Okay. Now these have got soldered connections, so can't pull them out too far. But this is where the AC board would bolt on. Apparently, it's pretty simple. I've got to look in the manual, but maybe it's something that can be made. Teflon. inserts in the PCB for very low or very high impedance great big read relay more read relays hmm ah and there's that little connector there I think maybe is for the AC board it is nice I'm kept by the look of it. Again, don't know what the boards do. So, there's the insides of this thing. the front panel comes off of just a couple of small screws and I've re-glued this perspex which was had come loose and cleaned up the glass on the Nixies that are a bit dirty so yes lovely and after much buggerizing around it's finally back together. I've replaced all those slotted screws and mismatched other screws with nice new M3 Phillips head units. Okay, does it still work? Yes it does. It always seems to be one count out and maybe that's something to do with zero control. Uh, I'll put it against another meter now. So I've got a 10 volt reference up here, powered off batteries running into the Schlum Schlumberger and to these two HP meters which you can see are in fairly close agreement and I particularly trust this one uh, and not too far off 
it sh I guess that should be well I guess if you rounded that up to two decimal places well that, no that should be a zero still and if we press zero on that take the filter off zero 50 volts there it is 10 but I think it'll creep up any second yeah I'll make a liar out of me zero goes that's not zero is it it's one 50 volts if you turn on this filter thing it seems to average so it, it does lots of averages until it gets to the value if I go to zero it averages down to zero or one 50 averages up to 10 again oh there you go I guess that's pretty close now I'll let all this stuff warm up for a while and we'll, we'll see what happens. Right, I've bolted another digit onto these guys and turned filtering on them as well. And yeah, pretty good. It's, they've been warmed up for about half an hour. Um, depending on which one of these you believe, that should be naught or one at the end. Because if you rounded that five up to four digits, you'd have 10.01. But if if this one's right then 10.00 and I'll trust this one more so let's try a different voltage I'll feed that voltage reference into a 10 turn pot and we can take off a voltage at a, at a lower level and I can switch this down to the 5 volt range if we go below 5 volts so there we are at uh, set at about 4 volts now we can switch to the 5 volt range here filters its way up there eventually a bit more I'm not going to make it so out by what a millivolt half a millivolt one and a half millivolts two volts close very close bit below. A 10 turn pot dividing 10 volts means you've got one volt per turn so trying to get a millivolt is a thousandth of a turn and it's uh, not quite easy. So it's reading what? One and a half millivolts probably not even that. One and a half millivolts low but no, now it's gone up there, so yeah, about a millivolt out. Pretty good, isn't it, for something that was made in 1970. I don't know how long since it's been calibrated, but some of these days I might uh, dig in there with the manual and see how close I can get it. But I've got to come up with something, a better uh, voltage source. I've got a, uh, I've got a machine that does that, but it's broke at the moment, so that'll have to be repaired and then I can get dial up a six digit voltage and feed into that and that and twiddle things all right that'll do for the Schlumberger VB6601 voltmeter quick and dirty teardown hope you enjoyed um, maybe like and subscribe catch you later